Hey, everyone. Welcome to our week where we are discussing the veterinary shortage. Um, I know this is a big problem for a lot of people. Uh, I called to get a cardiology appointment for my dogs, and the wait is three months. Um, and that's me being willing to drive up to Delaware. I had contacted North Carolina State University to get a cardiology appointment, and it's an 11-month wait. Um, so there's, there's a shortage. There's a problem with getting in. Um, I'm very lucky if I have an issue with my pets that just needs to see our, our general veterinarian, I can usually get in pretty quickly. Um, so they have been very good about that, but I do know that people are waiting for months and months to get in. Um, and it can be very difficult to find anybody to do what you need done. And if you need specialty appointments, that gets really crazy. Um, for instance, when our cat Q broke his leg, it happened to be a Friday morning and finding a surgeon who was willing to do the surgery on a Friday afternoon was pretty difficult. We had to drive three hours, but it was worth it. All right. So there's a lot of reasons that we have this shortage. Um, so I'm going to discuss a couple of them. One is burnout, veterinary burnout. Burnout is a work-related syndrome of physical and emotional exhaustion secondary to prolonged, unresolvable occupational stress. Individuals of different demographic cohorts may have disparate experiences of workplace stressors and burnout impacts. Healthcare organizations are adversely affected by burnt-out workers through decreased productivity, low morale, suboptimal teamwork, and potential impacts on the quality of veterinary care. This is uh, an article from Frontiers in Veterinary Science. 32% of first-year veterinary students experience clinical levels of depressive symptoms and report higher anxiety levels than medical students and the U.S. general population. First and second year veterinary, so this starts very early, by the way. First and second year veterinary students experience moderate feelings of burnout and the greatest levels of emotional exhaustion during the spring semesters. Over the course of the three preclinical years, veterinary student empathy declines and personal distress rises. In general, veterinary students report high levels of burnout, poor mental health, and good physical health. Risk factors for poor mental health in veterinary students include perceived poor f physical health, unclear expectations in the curriculum, difficulty fitting in with peers, excessive academic workload, and homesickness. Additional reported stressors include unsatisfactory family and personal relationships, debt and financial self-insufficiency, lack of time for social and recreational activities, chronic sleep deprivation, time demands, the experience of constant academic evaluation, and academic concerns. Yep. Describes vet school very well. I think it probably describes a lot of other. And, and this article also compared medical students, and so a lot of it is similar. Um, so I think if you're in any kind of a, a grueling curriculum, there's that whole lack of sleep and uh, the problem for for veterinary and medical students is they also hold life and death in their hands and they're not really capable of making those life and death decisions and they don't want to really be responsible for making them um, at least early on. So and when, when you get to the point where you have to start making those decisions, it, it, it's pretty grueling. Um, so personal distress can secondarily lead to unprofessional behaviors and attitudes, even when students feel guilty about engaging in such behaviors and medical professionalism attributes deteriorate as mental well-being issues grow. The formal educational culture may advocate teamwork and professionalism, but the hidden curriculum tends to incentivize performance and competitiveness over collaboration, which may lead to cynicism. Yep. Um, poor self-treatment by teachers and mentors sends powerful messages to students who internalize maladaptive concepts of professionalism, adopt similar behavioral patterns, and then perpetuate this messaging themselves. Veterinary and medical school schools set the stage for later professional burnout, which is viewed by some as an inevitable consequence of the way the healthcare education is structured. Veterinary house officers experience high levels of burnout characterized by high emotional exhaustion and low personal accomplishment. The mental component of their quality of life scores scored consequently lower than the general U.S. population. <coughs> 
Veterinarians commonly describe an inability to balance training demands with maintenance of at least one aspect of personal health, such as exercise, social engagement, diet, and economic satisfaction. And more than half of those veterinarians report their work-life balance as unsustainable. Half. Almost one-third of participating veterinarians evaluate their current eating habits as poor, because you're always eating on the run, standing up, eating fast food. Uh, with greater than 90% attributing this at least partly to programmatic demands. Veterinary residents in academia are particularly affected as they receive two to three fewer days off per month and obtain three to four hours less sleep per 48 hours than those in private and corporate practice. Yeah, residencies really stink. Most veterinarians consider their current economic situation to be fair or poor, and a striking 95% report feelings of anxiety related to finances. And I can say that throughout my 36-year career, anxiety related to finances was my number one driver. Um, this finding likely reflects that veterinary resident and intern annual salaries do not meet the minimum income standard of a living rate wage. They do not. When I graduated from veterinary school, I was married to a classmate and I got a job making $20,000 a year, and he got an internship making $12,000 a year. The next year, I got a raise. I think I went up to $30,000, and he went to $15,000. <laughs> really stunk because then he was a resident. Salary gaps between residency programs also exist with reported salaries of $40,000 per year in academic programs and $10,000 per year more in private practice residencies. Well, at least it's gone up since 1984. <laughs> Uh, by comparison, new graduates hired as full-time associate veterinarians reported a mean private practice starting salary of $111,000 in 2022. Wow. <laughs> On top of these pay disparities, 87% of veterinary graduates leave school with veterinary degree student loan debt. Yeah, like two hundred and fifty dollars to $400,000. Inadequate financial reward for work and financial stresses are consistently demonstrated to be important contributors to burnout among veterinary and physician, um, veterinarians and physicians. The prevalence of burnout was higher in women than in men in almost 90% of studies comparing burnout between genders. Women veterinarians exhibit higher burnout risks and scores compared to men. Younger, less experienced veterinarians exhibit higher burnout rates compared to those with more experience. Like I said, when you have to start making those life and death decisions, it becomes, well, this is the real world. Um, greater burnout risk is seen among those carrying higher educational debt loads. Yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> While historically veterinary medicine has been a male-dominated profession, women currently account for 80% of graduating veterinarians in the U.S. each year and represent an increasing proportion of practicing veterinarians at 64% of the U.S. veterinary workforce in 2020, and I would say it's more than that now. Women veterinarians are less likely to be paid equivalently, less likely to be practice owners, uh, less likely to exhibit the same progression through academic ranks as men or to be in professional leadership positions. Among veterinary surgeons, the personal income of men was a mean of 18% greater. Really? We still have this gender economic gap? Oh, man. 18% um, greater than that of women. And in academia, male veterinary surgeons were more likely than women to be associate or full professors. Women veterinarians remain underrepresented on editorial boards, including managing editors, 32% women versus 67% men, and editors, 35% women, 65% men. Working veterinarian mothers reported high rates of perceived maternal discrimination. Well, I lost my job for being pregnant, so, you know, that was in 1989, but still. Um, or workplace inequity. Perceptions of work relationships and support impact women veterinarians' job satisfaction more than that of men's. Women veterinarians continue to face demonstrable discrimination in the workplace. You know, what year is this? Age has been associated with burnout as an independent variable, with younger veterinarians being at greater overall risk than their older counterparts. This finding likely reflects greater professional uncertainties and less professional confidence combined with student debt and financial uncertainties. Age influences resilience to fatigue, a large risk factor for burnout. Um, I did that one. All right. 
44% of private veterinary practitioners report considering leaving the profession. 44% want to leave the profession, including greater than 40% of those who graduated within the last 10 years. That's a lot of time and money to then. Actually, uh, one of my classmates never practiced. She graduated and said, I hate this, became a bank teller. Uh, Self-employed veterinarians express stress more frequently, but also a better morale than associate veterinarians. Associate veterinarians are twice as likely to develop feelings of reduced job satisfaction and are also more likely to experience burnout relative to practice owners. Well, see, there's a good reason to own a practice. (laughs) While both experience stress, veterinary practice owners exhibit far less burnout than non-owner associates. I think if you're an owner, you also have a slightly different personality. Um, These findings are concerning as the rate of veterinary practice ownership has declined from 45% in 2013 to 36% in 2020, and that number is continuing to go down. Increasing numbers of veterinary practices have been purchased by consolidating corporations where clinicians have no ownership stake and reduced decision-making input and organizational structure that may promote work stress and burnout. Well, when we talk about corporate versus private, yeah, more burnout. Increasing numbers and types of non-traditional types of clinical veterinary practice, including shelter medicine, house call general practice, high volume spay neuter practice, locum service based practice, mobile imaging or surgery specialists, and remote specialty consultation based practice. Uh, we're seeing more and more of those. Uh, veterinarians prim- primarily engaged in companion animal practice exhibit, high, exhibit higher burnout scores than veterinarians in all those other types of practice. Certain subsets of veterinary practice, such as shelter medicine, are also more likely than others to experience particular forms of work stress related to empathic distress, secondary trauma, and moral injury that can also subsequently contribute to burnout and can never be a shelter vet. Um, those in education and research reported the highest levels of stress. It's, it's the uh, publisher peril. Uh, those in research, teaching, industry, and government positions experience the highest levels of depression, of academic veterinarians reported depressive symptoms. 62% of veterinary faculty met the criteria for burnout. So we have stressed out, burnt out people teaching the students who are stressed out and burned out. Like, who's going to right the ship here? Um, Veterinary academicians report working substantially more hours and receiving fewer days off per month than private practitioners. Private practice small animal surgeons reported working 40 to 49 hours per week compared with 50 to 59 hours per week by academic surgeons. Um, so these, this is for surgeons. I can tell you there's another study that I don't have here um, that I just read with, that said that the in private practice, companion animal practice, the average number of hours worked per veterinarian was 35.5, something right in there. And now it's 31 average hours per week. So when we're talking about shortages, when I was in private practice, and I'm not saying this is the right way to do it, just different generational things. But when I was in private practice, a 50 to 60 hour week was the norm. It's just what it was. It's what we all did. Um, and now veterinarians are working an average of 31 hours per week. Well, we just cut it in half. So we need twice as many veterinarians. Why is there a shortage? Because we need twice as many to cover the same number of hours. And there's more animals and more animal owners. It's a bad combination. (laughs) Okay. Um, incentives in modern veterinary academic practice are consistently misaligned with stated goals Prestige, funding, time and resource pressures, and a winner-take-all mentality incentivize individual individualistic behaviors over team-promoting ones. Very true. Emotional exhaustion and burnout may influence not only the, the delivery of quality clinical care, but also the quality of training provided to students and veterinarians. So what our animals are receiving and what we are receiving as pet owners is declining because the people that are delivering the care are so stressed and burned out that it affects everything. It's a trickle-down effect. 
um, physically present but psychologically withdrawn, a burnt out clinical workforce will have significant adverse effects on the veterinary business itself with direct and indirect fiscal impacts, morale erosion, toxic work environments, and disrupted teams, impacts to practice reputation, low productivity, high rates of absenteeism and staff turnover, increased medical error rates, and reduced client satisfaction. Anybody seeing that? Challenges in balancing personal life with work are clearly associated with burnout. Evidence suggests that clinician burnout impacts patient care independent of clinical experience. Burnout-affected physicians consistently exhibit twice the risk of having patient safety incidents as those unaffected. Stress, illness, and fatigue have been identified as causes of error in veterinary practice. A reciprocal cycle is created in which burnt-out affected individuals are more likely to report having caused a medical error and having contributed to a medical error is a stressor associated with the development of worsening of burnout. There's the never-ending cycle. An individual experiencing burnout may not only be unable to maintain appropriate patient and workplace safety, but may continue to further deplete their personal, mental, physical, and emotional reserves in attempting to do so. Burnout generates organizational costs through absenteeism, clinician turnover, signing bonuses, and ramp-up costs for new hires. Reduced organizational effectiveness compounds this effect through lost patient capacity and billings as a result of reduced working hours, lost tacit knowledge, mentorship, work routines, internal and external relationships. At best, individual recovery from severe burnout may be prolonged, requiring months away from work. 80% employees of employees with serious but short-term stress recover fully within weeks. The recovery from severe burnout usually requires a work hiatus that may take more than a year and even two to four years later, 25 to 50% of such impacted individuals are not fully recovered. So when I was reading this, I was talking to Hugh about it, and I said, um, at one point, I was doing relief work, and I had been scheduled to stay three weeks in one hospital because the owner was going to be away for three weeks. And then the third veterinarian in the practice was pregnant. So it was supposed to be she and I working those three weeks together. Well... She had problems with her pregnancy and got sent home for bed rest on like day one of the three weeks. So for three weeks, I was the one doctor running a three doctor practice Monday through Saturday. And it was an hour and a half drive from my house. So my son was about two years old at the time. And I would leave my house at 630 in the morning, drop him off at my mother's house. He would stay with her and my dad all day. And usually I left the clinic about 10 o'clock at night and I would go pick Andrew up and then drive home and four or five hours later, turn around and go back. And I did that for three weeks. And when the owner of the practice came back from vacation, he knew what had happened. Uh, when he came back from vacation, he came in and he took one look at me and he said, and, and I, I, you know, my hair looked like this and I, you know, was crying and he said, how much time do you need off? Would three weeks be good enough? I'll give you the three weeks that I just took from you. Is three weeks enough? And I went, oh, I think so. <laughs> and I got my three weeks off because I was burned out. I was very burned out. All right. So in the U.S., the impact of burnout in veterinary practice has been estimated to reach $2 billion in lost revenues each year, with a median cost of turnover of $104,000 for each veterinarian and $59,000 for each veterinary technician. It takes a long time to bring on a new technician or a new veterinarian and train them the way that you want them to do things in your practice. Um, and they're not fully up to speed for quite a while. Uh, so it is a very costly thing to have to replace a doctor or a technician or even a receptionist. I mean, any anybody on the team, it takes a long time for them to train and understand the practice culture. So you don't want that high turnover. You really don't want that high turnover. Um, okay. Ultimately, uh, veterinarians experiencing unaddressed job dissatisfaction, burnout, anxiety, depression, and or PTSD generally either leave the clinical setting through career changes within the institution, depart the organization for clinical positions elsewhere, reduce their clinical work hours, change specialty, or retire early, or leave the profession. 
Similar to the reductions in career choice satisfaction expressed by veterinarians, regretting one's career choice is three times more common in burnt out uh, veterinarians than in their unaffected counterparts. Um, so this should raise concerns about the adequacy of the future workforce, considering the current shortage, care shortage in the veterinary profession. A veterinary health report by Mars Corporation in 2021 predicted the U.S. will need 41,000 more veterinarians by the year 2030, representing an anticipated shortage of nearly 15,000 veterinarians, including both general practitioners and specialists, and resulting in a lack of access to care for an estimated 75 million pets. Work hour reduction can be an effective strategy to reduce burnout for individuals, but has important implications for the entire workforce. This effect to veterinary medicine uh, does not offer much optimism about the potentially impending wider profession level impacts of burnout, currently estimated to affect 50% of veterinarians at varying levels of severity. This concern is amplified in the context of the expected ongoing growth in demand for veterinary care. Uh, veterinarians reportedly experience occupational illness or injury at a rate nearly three times that of medical doctors. All right. So a veterinary practice seeking to reduce burnout and improve well-being should concentrate on fixing the workplace and creating a resilient organization rather than fixing the employee. Um, some of the most consistently mentioned concerns of veterinarians in as uh, association with burnout job satisfaction and intent to leave our workload time and pressure caseload expectations should be set based on reasonable human cognitive load limits it's not a matter even of how many you're physically capable of dealing with it's the mental capacity to look at a challenging case every 15 minutes figure it out and move on um, you know when you may have a client crying client or a mad client that you're also dealing with so it's it's a lot um, so, and then, uh, caseload expectations should be based on what is required to provide good patient care. I don't think that we can keep saying we get 10 minute time slots or 15 minute time slots that that's, that's not reasonable for the physician or the veterinarian to deal with that kind of load. Um, Manageable case numbers will be higher in less complex caseloads and lower in more complex caseloads. If case complexity represented by task load per case has risen, the time required to provide good patient care has also risen per individual, and what historically used to be a reasonable inpatient census per doctor may no longer be viable. The evidence that time pressure and heavier workloads on clinical personnel result in a variety of poor outcomes critical to the cost and quality of care should incentivize practice leadership to act proactively to minimize clinician burnout. But no, when you're paid on production, you can't say, I only want to see one client an hour because you're not going to make any money. You're going to go broke. It's not a good way to pay people. Um being able to provide consistent clinical excellence in healthcare depends on operational efficiency. At least 60% of companion animal practices exhibited severe inefficiency problems. Um, most clinicians respond better to an approach of empower and encourage rather than command and control, but unfortunately, most uh, employed veterinarians and technicians are under command and control. Um, a professional culture that regards chronic stress as a rite of passage promotes judgment and feelings of self-stigma when burnout does occur, when individuals believe that they should be able to cope with this supposedly unavoidable aspect of their chosen career, and it leads to worsening stress and reduced help-seeking. Lower burnout scores were identified for veterinarians in higher income categories beginning at annual salaries of $150,000. So if you're making $150,000, you might be able to make ends meet. And that's probably more likely to be a practice owner or somebody higher up in the hierarchy. Relative salary differentials may also be symptomatic of organizational inequities, which may be yet another contributor to higher rates of burnout in women than men, given the gender pay gap. Productivity-based compensation as an incentivization structure has been associated with increased burnout risk. Yes, because it's that publisher peril, performer or, or doom. That's... 
70 to 75 percent of veterinary student and practitioner respondents in a recent survey targeting the shortage of veterinarians in emergency practice indicated that a flexible work schedule would encourage them to enter or remain in the field of emergency medicine. Between 54 and 99 percent of veterinarians have indicated they would come to work despite the presence of symptoms consistent with infectious illness. I once had the flu so bad I was trying to do surgery and I would lay down on the floor in between surgeries because there was nobody else available to do it. Pretty bad. Um, <laughs> prolonged work hours due to deliberate scheduling of extended shifts or overrunning of standard work days due to practice inefficiencies, high workload. Man, every day was late. And extended work weeks as well as occupational sleep restriction resulting from interrupted sleep while on call, insufficient recovery sleep afterwards, or circadian disruption from poor scheduling all lead to insufficient rest and lack of physiologic recovery, a fundamental contributor to burnout. On-call duties especially the involving shifts of greater than 24 hours. I did emergency medicine for 10 years are consistently associated with high levels of clinician stress and greater burnout risks. Unsurprisingly, progressively fewer clinicians are willing to take on call duty as part of employment. Thank God we, we now have um, emergency <laughs> hospitals. Um, Given the exponential expansion of scientific knowledge in modern medical practice, at some point the profession may need to reevaluate the fundamental structures and expectations of veterinary education and or potentially consider future limitations or specifications on different types of veterinary licensure. Like if you know you want to be a small animal veterinarian, do you have to spend an entire year learning about horses and cows and goats and pigs and sheep and chickens? Maybe if we split the tracks and said, well, I, I choose equine medicine. I choose food animal medicine. Maybe we could learn more and be less stressed in those four years about the species that we want to deal with. Um, the training of future veterinarian scientists and specialists takes place predominantly in academic institutions. Strat strategies to reduce trainee burnout should focus on overall workload as well as curricular structure and delivery. Addressing veterinary burnout should begin preventatively in the first semester of veterinary school. On an individual level, improved sleep, better nutrition, more exercise, and more frequent contact with one's support system predicts improved psychological well-being in veterinary students. Reframing veterinary culture and what represents the norm should occur early. Uh, similar to the issue of veterinary debt, addressing the issues of professional stress and stress management even earlier than veterinary school itself via pre-veterinary college curricula might help prospective veterinary school applicants to one, better plan imagine, and manage their educational trajectories and build resilient habits earlier in their careers, two, improve financial literacy before veterinary school, a source of great deal of chronic stress in students, veterinarians, and early career veterinarians. Uh, three, allow them to make more informed decisions about their intended career paths before they commit themselves to a trajectory that may not meet their initial perceptions or expectations, rather than expect them to opt out once emotionally, logistically, and financially committed. Opting out at that stage is highly disincentivized by perceptions of failure and stigma, as well as the magnitude of unrecouped costs of veterinary school from a truncated career. Yeah, bad news. Um, Let's see. Workplace stress in veterinary medicine has a serious and direct toll on productivity, efficiency, quality of care, and human capital. Veterinarians are commonly hardworking, passionate, altruistic, and patient-driven professionals, but existing paradigms are unsustainable for many. Excessive workplace stress and unsustainable working conditions have been such a strong component of veterinary practice for so long that culturally the profession tends to view it as normal which contributes to the perpetuation of the problem. True. A host of rationalizations, economic, educational, etc., are frequently offered by both practice management and clinicians themselves to support the necessity of systems as currently configured. However, these conditions can only be seen as acceptable and necessary if the health and well-being of the clinicians are not a priority. Um, let's see. Veterinary management inattention to the workplace-related root causes of burnout is unjustifiable. 
If initiatives to reduce burnout and improve health within the veterinary profession are to be effective, they cannot simply advocate for symptom reduction and durable change is imperative. Improving veterinarian well-being will be most successful not by admonishing individual veterinarians to be more resilient, but by creating more resilient veterinary schools and practice environments that prioritize workforce well-being, regularly assess organizational burnout, and share accountability for these outcomes across leadership roles. Intentionally measure and improve the efficiency of the work environment and create a culture of support. Well, I guess this is a shout out to the corporations that own so many of the practices that maybe they should pay more attention to their employees and maybe they should pay them appropriately, give them appropriate time off. And how about some mentorship would be a really good idea. Um, it is incumbent on practice and educational structures to ensure that employees and trainees are not required to function in environments that promote burnout and other adverse sequelae such as career exit, mental illness, and suicidal ideation in such rates in veterinary medicine. All right, this is a survey on workload and well-being. Burnout and poor mental health may be key factors linked to the current shortage of veterinarians. This paper presents the results of a recent survey that attempts to gauge the scale of the problem. In the survey, veterinary staff are at significant risk of burnout with the highest rates seen amongst those in corporate practice and at university workplaces. 50% of workplaces have recently experienced difficulties in recruiting employees with the shortage in veterinarians and nurse technicians being the most important reason. Several papers have reported that those in the sector are at uh, greater, greater risk of burnout, depression, and even suicide when compared to, uh, in the veterinary sector when compared to other occupational groups. In a recent study, 35% of full-time veterinarians in the U.S. were classified as having low compassion satisfaction, 50% as having high burnout scores, and 59% as having secondary traumatic stress scores. Um, burnout is well-recognized in all spheres of life, and certainly within the veterinary profession, it affects not only the psychological and emotional health of individuals, but also the economic health of both specific practices and the entire industry. A systemic review of the consequences of burnout in general reported it was a significant predictor of multiple physical conditions, including cardiovascular disease, musculoskeletal pain, and depression. Furthermore, and more specifically to both the veterinary and other healthcare professions, burnout is positively associated with decreased quality of care, perceived clinical errors, errors, and a high likelihood of veterinary nurses, technicians, and human medical professions leaving their jobs. Within the veterinary profession, studies show that workplace stress is linked to high levels of staff turnover and absenteeism, which leads to higher costs. And man, we do not need the cost to be any higher. Turn my page. Um, don't need that. Okay. 70% of all respondents indicated there had been at least one burnout at their workplace in the last 12 months, either themselves or a fellow veterinarian nurse or student. Of these, 54% were veterinarians, 12% were nurses, 32% involved both veterinarians and nurses, and 2% were students. There were less respondents reporting burnout among veterinarians that own or work in a private clinic, 61%, than those in corporate clinics, 80%, or at the university, 83%. Um, 53% of veterinarians said they or their workplace had experienced a lot of difficulty in recruiting. In general, difficulties had been experienced in recruiting both veterinary surgeons and nurses, um, and veterinary surgeons were more difficult to recruit. People also stated difficulties in recruitment have affected the choice of a new employee. Uh, where a new veterinarian had been employed, 41% said that subsequently the appointment was not a good fit, but there had been no other options, and the individual had been hired out of availability rather than waiting longer. The situation for nurse vacancies is similar. 45% uh, who had contracted a new nurse did not subsequently think the person employed was a good fit. So that kind of leads me to the a warm body is not necessarily better than no body. Um, general dearth in avail available veterinarians and nurses. Other important reasons are low pay and the workload slash arduous shifts. Whilst the lowest frequency of burnout was in the private sector, 61% of these practices had still seen at least one case recently. This was significantly lower than the number of burnouts in corporate and university. One reason for the lower prevalence of burnout in private practice could be that they are better at taking proactive preventive measures, as we found that significantly more well-being actions were taken in this sector than in corporate or university practices. Owner veterinarians who are also employers will be more in touch with their employees and are therefore more aware of the need to be mindful of their well-being. 
Many veterinary establishments are having difficulties recruiting new colleagues. Almost half of the respondents had experienced considerable problems. A shortage in the veterinary workforce would mean there is a lack of practitioners in relation to animals needing care in an area. This may arise from either a shrinking number of available veterinarians or an increasing demand for pet health care or both. Data certainly points to an increase in demand. There's an overall increase in the number of companion animals. The average number of clinic appointments at veterinary practices in the U.S. increased 6.5% from 2020 to 2021. The ratio of veterinarians per head of population has not changed between 2015 and 2018 with an average of 0.38 veterinarians per 1,000 people. There is a decrease in availability, not in the total number of veterinarians, but in the number of hours worked as well as the productivity per person. Part-time rather than full-time working is an important reason for the shortage. A survey among veterinary professionals worldwide revealed that one in four respondents reported a desire to reduce their hours through part-time work. Another AVMA survey found that 30% of companion animal veterinarians said they wanted to work fewer hours. Moreover, Mm -hmm. veterinarians in the U.S. saw fewer patients per hour and average productivity declined by almost 25%. The question is then whether the shortage is a cause of the perceived decline in job satisfaction levels and the rise in burnout. The shortage definitely plays a role in the well-being of veterinary staff since the remaining practitioners often need to work more hours to comply with the high demand from animal owners. A German study showed the number of hours worked was proportional to the stress felt by veterinarians. In addition, the fact that practices will often employ veterinarians and nurses that are not suitable for the job must be significant. Our results show that in 41% of cases, a recently employed veterinarian was not really a good fit, which is detrimental as a close-knit team is one of the most important factors in occupational well-being. On the other hand, burnouts tend to lead to retention problems. 40% of veterinarians are considering leaving the profession, with the top two reasons cited being work-life balance and mental health challenges. Burnout is a significant predictor both for someone's intention to leave their current role and for abandoning the profession altogether. This is linked with a high turnover rate in veterinary medicine, especially compared with other healthcare professions. The average turnover for veterinarians is twice as high as it is for physicians in medical practice. Physicians will stay on average in a post for twice the time a veterinarian remains in a post. Thus, the vicious circle continues. A greater workforce shortage due to burnouts and more burnouts due to increased workload. So, it's a problem. Oh, one more. Okay. Uh, The vast majority of pet owners believe that an in-person examination by a veterinarian leads to the best care for their pet and prefer to meet their veterinarian in person before allowing them to care for their pet. It's good news. Uh, Advocates have pushed for the creation of a new mid-level position and to eliminate the requirement for establishing a veterinary client-patient relationship in person prior to using telemedicine. The survey's findings indicate that both would be met with heavy resistance from pet owners who prefer and recognize the importance of an in-person relationship with a licensed, fully qualified veterinarian and who have a strong preference for veterinarian-led care as opposed to delegating responsibility for care decisions to non-veterinarians, including a proposed mid-level employee. So the proposal was for something like a physician's assistant. So on the human side, we have different levels of nursing, and then we have a physician's assistant, and then we have our doctors, and then our specialists. And so they were considering doing that mid-level. Didn't pass. Um, So. Okay. So we have a shortage. We have a big problem. A lot of it revolves around burnout. A lot of it, I think, revolves around corporate takeover. Um, It kind of all plays into each other. So hopefully you find a good veterinarian that you like, whether they're in corporate practice or private practice. Treat them nicely. Take the staff goodies. Find somebody that respects your decisions and you respect theirs.